Right now, we're sending you to London, where Bloomberg's Francine Lacroix has an exclusive interview with Bill Winters, former co-CEO of J.P. Morgan's Investment Bank. Francine. Eric, thank you so much. And there's been so much talk about regulation over the last couple of weeks and indeed months. The man to speak to about this, Bill Winters, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Bill, every day there is some kind of regulation that actually gets struck down. Strauss Kahn, the head of the IMF, and indeed Mr. Trichet say actually maybe the momentum has now passed. And yet yesterday the Dodds financial overhaul got passed. Does this give you hope that there will be more regulation? Well, it certainly gives me hope that, that regulation will come to a conclusion, and, uh, and I'm sure that there will be more regulation. I think a lot of what's, what's happening is uh, ideas have been floated in the U.S., in Europe, uh, in the U.K. Uh, some ideas are, are more extreme, some are more mainstream, uh, and uh, what I think what's happening now is, is that the, 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 this bevy of regulation is being winnowed down into, into the core program. Uh, so uh, I think when, when ideas are floated uh, that are subsequently withdrawn or lose momentum, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Because the undercurrent is, is clearly one of getting back to, I think, a few of the core principles, which is banks are going to be required to carry more capital. Uh, banks are going to be uh, required to hold particularly high levels of capital against activities that are deemed to be particularly risky, or to use that, that term that, that, that uh, seems to evoke a lot of, uh, of anger or frustration, socially useful. But a year ago, exactly, there was a G20 in London, and they decided there was going to be some kind of big regulatory framework within the G20. It doesn't seem like it's like that. Countries are going at it alone. Alone. Countries are going at it alone, but I, I think having having staked positions alone, uh, that there does seem to be a pulling back to a, some sort of convergence. Uh, and I think the, the Basel Committee uh, is going to be central in terms of, of making sure that there is some underlying consistency to the rules that, that banks are uh, banks and other financial services firms are exposed to. But along the way, I think we can expect there to be uh, some lack of synchronization in terms of, of uh, the way different legal jurisdictions uh, apply the rules, the way uh, some of the the uh, taxation policies in particular are, in, are implemented. But at, at the end of the day, uh, I think certainly the major financial centers are very aware of uh, the competitiveness of their own industries and will be very reluctant to do anything that makes their home turf too uncompetitive. Do we need to protect the consumer more? It does seem that Senator Dodd tried to pass on this Consumer Protection Bureau at the Federal Reserve. Here in the UK, there are similar measures being announced possibly by Alistair Darling tomorrow about forcing banks to open bank accounts. Do, do banks need to become more social Active. Look, I think there's, there's two questions uh, that, that you've just raised. One is, do the protections need, do the consumers need more protection? Uh, and I think that varies very much from country to country. I, I think the evidence suggests that, that consumer protections in the UK are very strong, whereas clearly there was some mis-selling of, of credit product in the US. Of course, there was some here as well, but I think the, the, the protections will be beefed up. Uh, the second question is, does the consumer need to be subsidized to, to a greater extent than they have? And uh, in particular, uh, consumers who, who historically have not have, have not had access to financial services. And I think there, the, the, there's a case to be made for subsidization for the, the, the least uh, well-off in our society. But you have to be very careful not to create the sense of entitlement and, and embedded subsidy that makes the economy inefficient. Do we need to ban certain types of credit default swaps? When you were working at J.P. Morgan, it was the traders there that were said to have coined credit default swaps. Now they're saying actually these possibly led, uh, not the J.P. Morgan ones, but in general, to the downfall of Greek. Did you ever question that practice? Well, first of all, I, I don't think credit default swaps had anything to do with, with the issues in Greece. I think the issues in Greece have to do with, with too much borrowing and, and not enough revenue, uh, not enough economic growth. But uh, no, I don't think it makes sense to ban products, uh, credit default swap products, I think, serve a useful purpose. Uh, what, what clearly needs to happen is, is a stronger enforcement around market manipulation. So we've got good protections against market manipulation in equity markets uh, and the, the protection mechanisms that regulators have to protect against manipulation in the CDS market are less developed. Now, did that contribute to the Greece saga? Uh, I, I I, I think not. Uh, but nevertheless, if there was some sort of concerted action by investors to, to drive up the spread of, of Greek debt uh, in some way to, to precipitate a crisis, then that is market manipulation and should be countered. Uh, Bill, we have 20 seconds. Are you satisfied with the way regulation has been going so far? Oh, I think it's been very slow. Uh, but, but I think it's predictable. Given the magnitude of the, uh, of the problems that we faced over the past two or three years, uh, the solutions need to be really thoughtfully uh, deployed. And uh, I think it's been slow, but I don't think that's a bad thing.